In the last episode of Plant What On Me, Dr. Piacaset showed us the botanical wonders of the Queen Surrogate Botanic Gardens. From the rare limestone plants to the towering palms of the tropical rainforest house. But you learn so much more about a plant when you can observe it in its natural habitat. In this episode, Dr. Piacaset takes us on one of his expeditions to the Tiger's Nose, one of the tallest peaks in Thailand, to survey and document some of the rare plants he found growing in the wild. This turned out to be a trip we would never forget. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. yeah, see. Die already. No, they pretend to be dead. Look at, see. Her boyfriend. <laughs> you see? Look at Summer. They, <laughs> they pretend to be dead. They actually, I've never seen cicadas drop like that. All right, guys, you and your boyfriend and girlfriend can sit right here. Yeah, see, they're both alive. <laughs> okay, you can see here now the vegetation start to change from the normal hill evergreen forest to uh, open pine forest. Mm -hmm and you have uh, several different species also up here. We are going up to 1,600 meters to the tiger nose. You can say something uh, like National Geographic. Yeah. I'm here on the edge of this cliff here. No human has ever walked here before. What's that yellow flower right there? The yellow one? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same like this one, as oh, this one. Okay. Yes. It's a silis, silidaceae. Oh, okay. It looks like grass, but actually it's not. Yeah. It has its own family, huh. silidaceae. Yeah. And if you touch the, see the leaf, it's quite flat uh -huh. here. Yes. Oh, I found a very interesting plant. They try to crush the leaf and smell. Oh, yeah, lemon. Yeah, this is lemongrass tree. Wow. Yes. What family? Oh, Lauraceae. Oh, Lauraceae. Yes. Oh, Let's man, see a kubiba. Nice. This one, mm. if you come up here and you want to cook tom yum, yeah. you can, and you don't, don't have lemongrass, you can <laughs> use this. Use one. this as a it. substitute. Yes. Mm. Yeah, nice meal, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a rare impatience, you know. Oh. So, flowers of, of the balsam, impatience mengsiana. Oh, that's a beautiful color, it's a creamsicle. Right. Oh, that, that, the begonia. You see the begonia? Wait, I know it. Oh yeah, right yeah. there in the stream. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. It's the one with the... Get closer. Yeah. That's a nice one. Right. This is the begonia palmata. Begonia palmata? Yeah, in natural habitat. Very nice. Yeah. Growing next to the stream. Okay, we continue. Oh, look at the ants on the bracken fern. Yeah, I think I already irritated them. I think, uh, you see this one? Actually, this is quite interesting because the, the young shoot of the bracken ferns, uh -huh. it has a glands here, uh -huh. which produce some, uh, some sweet agent, oh. attract the ants. So ants... To protect can, the plant. Yes, stay here to protect the, the young shoot. Yep. Yes. It's a form of uh, oh, oh. Miramincodia, <laughs> yeah. I got bite. And up there, you can see a vertical cliff. Oh my down. God. <laughs> Just do not drop the camera down. <laughs> okay, another small uh, hypoxis here. Hypoxis aurea. Hypoxis aurea. Hypoxy daisy. Wow, this is just such an epic view. This is unbelievable. It's so hard to take it all in. Clear too, relatively speaking. See that? Okay. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Shall we go to that one? Yeah, absolutely. Look at it, this is uh, all uh, temperate, temperate species. Are you afraid of heights, Summer? I'm a little bit afraid of heights, so... Yeah, you can come here. Actually, there's a second step, not, not just this one. This is second step. 
Yeah, but how far down is the second step? <laughs> no, it's not that it's not that bad. You can come and have a look. Oh come, my come God. here. Okay, I'm gonna here. come. Yes. <sighs> look at that. Oh my god. Yeah, stand up here. That is just Yeah, here is still okay because oh, yeah. there's two three steps down. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah, this is your reward for today. Woo! I gotta take a photo of that. Oh boy. That's the million dollar view right here. You are really above the cloud. Yeah. Okay, we go up and trying to search for some uh, special flowers and I'm going to to uh, have some photos of it because we don't have any good photos for all of them. And these plants are endemic to this particular mountain? Yeah, many of them are only grow in this area. Wow. Yes. And this is a correct uh, time of the year to, to visit this mountain, you know. So I just want to be very ginger as to where I'm stepping. Yeah, be careful. The fog is really coming in right now. It was just clear, just like seconds ago. Yes. <laughs> Be careful. Look at this one. Actually, this is a uh, Y iris called Iris Coletiae. And it has uh, pale purple flowers, this one. Not in bloom though. Obviously. Not in bloom. It's already finished now. It's blooming in August. Hmm. You got a lot of great little wildflowers. Oh, that's here. one. I'm I'm going to photograph. This. Okay. This is the rare plants called Pedicularis unanensis. Now it belongs to Orobanchesi, which is a uh, hemiparasite parasitic plants. What's it a parasite on? It's on the root of grasses oh. and things like that. So you see, it has a very hairy and leaves stem. and stems. Yes. And what are the important things that you need to capture when you're photographing some of these plants? Yeah, of course, I'm trying to get the detail of the flowers as much as possible. And so really it's the inflorescence that you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, the inflorescence, actually the leaves and you see the, the stigma is coming out. There. Yep, yes, I see that. Petal shapes and things mm -hmm. like that. And actually I, I brought my ruler here so I can make measurement afterwards. Yeah. And then we collect this document and back to the herbarium. And we can recheck the, the name again. Yeah. Yes. But uh, the main reasons I got here once a year because I want to check the population of this one. Uh, because we used to have serious fire continuous for uh, four or five years and then it's destroyed some of the plants here also. So it's a kind of monitoring. Yeah. Yes. How the rare plants here get uh, recovered. Uh, carefully, this is quite steep here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, here. Can you move here? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes, yes. I'll come here. Okay. This is a rare gentian, only found in northern Thailand. Yeah, the sweatiest. Oh, it's beautiful. It's yes, the purple beautiful. stripes. It's a tiny little plant. More flowers coming up. Yeah, plenty. Yes. Okay, I'm glad I see this one. Maybe we're trying to find some more. It's quite uncommon here. I think there's a couple more down here. Where? Show me. Oh, wow. One right yes. here and there's, it looks like there's another one right here. Yes, yes, yes. I try to go this way. You see the petal? Yeah, it, it has, has a little, a, yeah, little uh, yeah, purple mm -hmm. stripe. It's named Strata. Yeah. yeah Strata is mean. Uh, the stripes. The stripes. Yes. How, how long do these bloom for? Maybe a couple of days and oh, okay. yes. So we're really hitting this place at the right, right time then. Right. It's down there. I have to I have to go like that. It's on that wet, wet cliff, maybe we are too late. 
Or maybe they were destroying all of them. Wow, it's still here. Oh, plenty of them. It's here. You want to come and see? See, it's only here. It's not up there. It's not down there. It's only here. But it's quite, you have to go, go around. Yeah, actually, this is a very uh, unique habitat for uh, many carnivorous plants. If you see here, it's a Drosera, Drosera peltata. You see, growing together with Pedicularis unanensis. This one again, they and move up a little bit. This is Drosera, the sun dew. Yeah. Yeah, summer would like to see something. The grass is kind of sticky, actually. Yeah. This is the I, ideal habitat for many species of Uticularia, you see. Huh, yeah. Bare rock like this, seeping water running down. What kind of yeah. rock is this? And exposed is a granite one. Granite, yes. okay. Oh. That's my rare plants. Yeah, the blue ones. The little one, blue ones. Wow. The blue one, yes. Oh, they're so stunning. They're so it blue. It was a new record. Uh, described first in India, only uh, a single locality. This is the second one in the world. It looks like they're gr growing in unison with the moss. Yes, yes. And you see, they need a the seeping water dripping down. Yeah. So once the climate change, yeah, you'd have less rain, then you have no seeping water, and this becoming smaller, smaller, and then gone. Yeah. And here, this one more endemic. Uh, plant species Bermania. This is also hemiparasite. Uh, Bermania uh, lasenia. Is that a hemiparasite to also the grass or to some? Yeah, to the grass, to the grass. So you have many nice species here growing wow. in the small communities. And then the small Iroocolon. Yes, this one. So the blue one is not endemic to here, but the, it's, but it's rare. Yeah, but it's rare. Yeah. It's found only in two places in the world. Wow. I want to find. He said we should eat right now because he's he waiting for us. He, he's quite oh, hungry, oh, he's hungry also, okay. <laughs> and yeah, he's quite he's too polite to oh. you know eat alone. So we just eat in five minutes and then whatever. What kind of animals do you have up here? Up here, not many animals. No rodents or anything? Mm. He said squirrel and mm. some, yeah, some other things. Mm. In the old day, they are... Mm. He said uh, also the sorrel, you know that? It's the kinds of mountain goat. Mm. Yeah. Are they all yeah. killed or off? Or? All killed. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. That top, there's still the area that they, they uh, preserve okay. for, for this kind of animal. So still there, but not, okay. not there, here, this big. Would they ever reintroduce them here? Because it is a national park, so it, they should be protected here, right? Yeah, but it's, as you see, mm -hmm. yesterday we saw lots of yeah. motorbikes, and see, this yeah. is this difficult. We're heading back down but we're also going to see if we can find some more interesting and rare flora. Can you wait here for a while? I go and yeah. check my plant. Yep. I think it's growing there on the wet cliff. Check. You have to be careful, huh? Uh, my new species of Utricularia described some years ago, which is endemic to this mountain. Only, and you, you can see the, they have a small leaf and trap along the roots, the, along the stems also. So they really need the seeping water to survive, you know, an open platform like, like this. Once when you, it, it's great, get dries up and you get the vegetation cover this one, so it will be gone. Many years ago, it was plenty here, cover this wet rock. So I'm not so happy to see a few plants here. Let's get out of here.
Oops. Watch out. Helenia elliptica, it's a type of gentian. Yes. It actually looks, it's shaped a little bit like a small columbine. This is actually, it's a Himalayan element, you know, from the Himalaya. But in Thailand, it's found only in this mountain. Wow. One more here. Yeah. Okay, you see this red ginger here, so we yeah. call it uh, jing, uh, jelly gingers because it's, uh, if we take this one out, this or squishes is... it, it contains a lot of Ooh. jelly. So it's like pectin almost. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's like, actually it's a little bit more like snot. Yes. Do people use that as like a medicine or? No, no, no. no? It's uh, produced uh, by itself to prevent the insects. Oh. Yes, for eating the flowers and fruits. Here yeah. it's a fruit. See? Is that, um, is that characteristic to a lot of gingers? Or no, no, no. Primary, this, oh, this one. This species. Interesting. Yes. So does this have any digestive juices? Like if an insect gets caught in there? I, I don't think so. Okay. It's just a slimy Unbelievable how slimy it is. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to say the name. It's a uh, Zingiber densissimum. Zingiber densissimum. densissimum. Okay, densissimum. Yes. This one I can't remember. The, the lemongrass. Yeah, the lemongrass yeah, tree. The, the fruits, yeah. the young fruits there. And then, hmm. Oh God, that smells so good. It's like lemongrass and a little bit of curry. Yes. Oh God, that is, that is probably one of my favorite smells of all Thailand. <laughs> wow. Oh, this one's brilliant. I don't know what kind of coleoptera he is, but. No, no it's himip. It's a himip? Yes. Oh, where's his, uh... oh yeah, he has a little like proboscis underneath. I don't. It has only one wing, not oh, two so wings. Oh, so it doesn't you know? have an Yeah, so so it's elytra. open like to a light drop. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh wow, that's so cool. It actually, it's so. It looks like a a beetle, but it's like you said, it's not. Right. Okay, I'm gonna just try to see if I can grab it if he allows me to. Oh, there he goes. Wow. Yeah. Where it 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 will, it's going to fly and it will open the Volkswagen hatch, like right. the like hatchback. Right. Oh, he's so cute. You see, it has no... Yeah. Uh, yeah. No elytra. <laughs> yeah. Open the hatchback. I see some wings in there. Yes, almost, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Too hard, then, then it's... They don't... <laughs> and then it's try to... Yeah, Think. yeah, yeah. Come on. Okay, this guy is not... Ah! <laughs> he pooped on me. It probably stinks. Yeah, it does. Oh man, that's a cool bug. You're so cool. He's like, let me go back onto my my place where I just was. Yes. Well, that's a neat one. That's a new one for me. I'm surprised that he's a hemipterin. Summer, this is Tumbergia fragrance. Its species name is fragrance? Yes. So it's fragrant? I guess so. Maybe at the night time. Yeah, not no, now. no, no, not now. What a disappointment for that scientific <laughs> name. <laughs> Is this a vining one? Yeah, well? it's a vining one. Okay, yes. yeah, I see it right, vining. Right. You see the small flowers here? Yeah, I do. Yeah. This is a Clodrendum serratum. Only one flower left. Wow, but it's a pretty cool flower. Yes. I'm glad we have one left. <gasps> oh, this is quite an in interesting plant. Belong to the orange family, hmm. Rutaceae. This is Boeing Halsenia albiflora. You see the small fruit there. Yeah, very tiny. Yeah, if you grab it and you squeeze it, it gives you a, a little nice, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, that's powerful. A lot, right. a lot of smell in that little fruit. Right, right. And for wow. rutaceae, it's, it can very easy to recognize. You you get one leaf and if you trying to see it again, again the lights, you see the, the oil glands, the gland dots. Oh yeah, you do. So if you hold this up to the light, you could see some of the oil glands in the leaf. And the flower is so tiny, white one. So tiny, but yeah. I can't believe the smell that's in this, you know, little packet of fruit. Yes. Get some cicadas yelling at us. Oh, here we have a uh, white asparagus. That's so cool. Oh, it has easy. fruits on, on its... Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. So three carpels. So, so if does this have any anything like our regular asparagus, like a 
It has a, a tuberous Tuber? root, yes, yeah. tuberous, and and people, local people, collect this one uh, for medicinal purpose. Do you know what species this is? I'm not quite sure. I will check yeah. it later. Okay. Yes. Asparagaceae. Actually, it's one of the common species. As we're going down the mountainside, we're getting a lot more of that sun, and we're not in the high elevation any longer, so the clouds aren't moving through here. So. This is the usnia. Oh, there's is the usnia. Yeah, so it's a lichen. Usnia. Yeah, lichen. That looks like the Tillandsia usinoides. Yeah. Yes. Super cool. See, this is the transition zone between the pine and the the oak forest there. The evergreen here, evergreen. Uh, you can see here, it's you got a quite a clear cut. Yeah. This size, it's a it's no more pine. Yep. And just only this size. Yep, it's all pine. Yeah, all pine. And the the seedling of the pine would not be able to grow in that kind of. Yeah, place. because they would need a little bit more bare yeah, land. Yeah, more more sun. This is a strobilanthus. This is uh, popular in the States as a bedding plant, or sometimes you'll, you'll see the purple version or the green version for an indoor house plant, although it's probably better as a bedding plant, but has these really cool silver markings on. It's really neat to be able to see it actually in the wild. Ooh, what's this? Here it's the Crypsinus uh, rhincophilus, which is a uh, it has a quite a distinct dimorphic form. This is the sterile one. It's a smaller and quite a oval shape. And this is a fertile leaves, uh, pretty much longer. See the, the Oh, source. yes. So you can tell this is a fern because it has the spores. Yes, yes. And then that's an elaphoglossum, mm. isn't no, it? It's an Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. You get to see a little bit of the... Uh, right of the sheen on that, which is also a fern. But look at this uh, correlation on, on the leaves oh, here. Yeah. yeah, lovely, isn't it? Beautiful, it, it looks like dark, little ink dark, markings. Yeah, dark, darker wind. Oh, look at this. Wow, that is super cool. It's a kind of grasshopper. It's going to oh, hurt. yeah, I see, I see that it's like yeah. rearing up. It's not jumping. Not looks, jumping. Yeah, it looks like a cicada. Oh, there it see? goes. <laughs> That's so cool, wow. Just, oh, he just stained me. <laughs> Looks like a recurring thing with insects is just like taking a little piss on me. You may think people do etchings on the tree, but this is actually a, a mining insect that does this. You can often try to determine what the species of insect is just by the way that they actually mine. So what is this fruit? It's the uh, Castanopsis diversifolius. It's one need... of the oak family, you know. Yeah, I guess you need a machete because they look so spiny. Is it edible? It's edible. Hmm, a little mealy, but good. Do they roast them as well? Yes, much better when we roast it. Oh, look at this interesting plant. Oh, it's pretty. It's uh, Polygala, Polygalaceae. Is this a seeds starting yeah, right seeds. here? It has a hard shaped fruit. Does it have um, a couple seeds in it or yes, multiple? Yes, yes, I think two seeds in yeah. it. Yellow color, you see? Yeah, yellow I see the yellow and then, and then, yes, and then it gets then a little they, red. They, yes, and then they turn to a little bit orange yeah. red. There's an H. cananthus up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Great, another rare plant. Great. <laughs> <laughs> This Ashkenanthus is a little bit better to see than that one up in the tree. Yeah, this is uh, Ashkenanthus andersonii. Sometimes they said it's a hemiparasite because it seems go in the crack of the yeah, trees and you know sometimes it's uh, have also the root between the bark and the uh, vascular bundle. So this is what we call the lipstick plant yes. often and uh, as a common name. Right, right, right. This is a small quite nice in it. So if you actually remove this from the tree, since it's hemoparasite, it'll still be able to live on its own. Uh, this one I tried before and it can, it can, uh, it's still alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not fully parasitic it's not then? Fully, maybe it's, it's not a parasite yeah. at all. 
It just happens to like little crooks and crannies of the right. tree. Oh. Yeah, it's handy as so you can. Yeah. It's... Oh my God, such a tight little ball. Gosh, she fits so perfectly together. So supposedly this is one of their um, edible mushrooms here. This one's quite large. Can feed the whole family. Yeah, <laughs> at least for one day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's gonna going take to, it? to take it. Uh, see, he is going to feed his whole family tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sour curry. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. how does he cook it? And... Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. Two nights of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this tiny orchids sitting on the bark like this. This one's really cute. Yes. It's the mini mini area, this one. Area? Area, yeah. Is this the flower or the past flower? This is the fruit already. Yeah. Look at the pseudobulb. Yeah. It has some kinds of netted patterns. No, it will be die because it's just the fit, the tree just fell down. Oh, so it actually really need, the tree needs to be standing. Right, right. It wouldn't typically be on decaying wood. Right. This is one of the smilax vines. You can see it has really funky leaves at the base of the petiole. These are vining creatures, so this one will eventually probably find a tree and vine up. Hello, What? Are you serious? Yes, yes. I just got a call. Oh my god! Like just at the space yes. place? Yes, half an hour ago. Oh my god. Oh my god. Unbelievable. That's insane. I think we're heading back. Yeah, I think we should and head the, back. The, the, the van is coming. Yeah, we just got some really bad news. Uh, one of the botanists that we came with who was feeling sick a little earlier actually just had a heart attack and died. Um, his name is Shanine. He's a great botanist and we actually got some film footage of him actually talking about plants. And we are going to be heading back down right now to the hospital to um, go check in with our other friend. As one of my mentors has said, sometimes you think life, and sometimes life thinks you. Experiencing loss has a way of refocusing you through the blur of tears, the fogginess of mind, comes a sobering clarity that reminds us to pursue our passions fully and to fill our lives with the people we love and who love us back.